Hey YouTube, um, so this is a different angle you're seeing me at. Um, and the reason I'm doing this way is because I wanna show you some cool chemistry, math type stuff that you might be doing. Uh, specifically, I did a video on mayonnaise and something came to my mind and it was, well, what is, what is the pH of mayonnaise? And that was actually a really interesting thing because as I looked into it, it actually wasn't a straightforward calculation. A couple of things I need to get out of the way. If I'm gonna talk about the pH of something, I need to define what pH is. So pH, very strictly, is the negative log of the concentration of what I'm gonna call hydrogen atoms. Now, depending on how you said chemistry, sometimes it's also called the negative log of hydronium atoms. Either way, I'm gonna call it the concentration of things that make things acids. So that just kind of gets that out of the way. Next thing I need to talk about, I need to talk about the concentration of the acid atoms. Um, so for a strong acid, that's really easy because the concentration of acid that you have, strong acid that you have, is going to be equal to the concentration of your hydronium ions or acid ions. However, in my mayonnaise, I use a weak acid. I use acetic acid, which is in vinegar. When it comes to weak acids, you actually can't use that idea. Instead, you have to use something called the disassociation constant. In order to understand what that means, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down an equilibrium equation. And what that's gonna say is that the concentration of hydrogen bonded to some acid times its disassociation constant is gonna equal the amount of hydronium ions or hydrogen atoms or acid at ions times the concentration of the disassociated acid or weak acid base things. Obviously you can tell I'm not a chemistry major. If I rearrange this, I can see that the disassociated constant is equal to, and in this case, my is going to be acetic acid, which is CH3COOH. That's gonna come into play later on. Okay, so let's talk about what we know. So this disassociation constant is something that's just written in textbooks. You can go look it up. You can look up K values for weak acids. But if you look up acetic acid, you're gonna find out that this value is equal to about 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. What else do we know? We know that this and this are gonna be pretty much the same because if you look at this part of the equation, they were you know, the same thing. They just disassociated, disassociated with themselves. So really I can simplify that to x squared, the same term, just squared. But how about that concentration of the, you know, molecule itself? Well, we're gonna have to do a little bit more work for that one. So let's talk about that concentration. So if I write down concentration, by definition, it's the number of things, usually moles, divided by total volume. Okay, so we can talk about both of these pretty easily, but let's start with volume. So for the volume, in my mayonnaise, I use two egg yolks. And each egg yolk is about 24 grams times, uh, there's a, about 50% water concentration in an egg yolk. The rest is like fats and proteins. So that is kind of be about 12 grams of water. Next, I used about two to three-ish tablespoons of vinegar. So that's roughly about 45 grams. In addition to this, depending on how I make my mayonnaise, sometimes there's about one tablespoon of water. And that's roughly about 30 grams. Sorry, 15 grams. So in total, that gives me about 72 grams of water. And because water is so well understood, I know that is 0 0.8. 0.072 liters. That's the volume. Awesome. Next, let's talk about the number or like the number of things that are in there. So let's keep in mind that we're talking about acetic acid. Acetic acid, since it's so well known, you can actually look at a periodic table of elements and calculate, calculate its molar mass. Its molar mass is, let me just check my notes, 60.05 grams per mole. You can double check my math, but that's roughly what it is. So if I want to know the number of moles, I need to know how many grams I have. Well, it's pretty easy. I kind of have it right over here. So I have 45 grams of acid, but you know what? Only about 5% of it is actually acid. The rest is just kind of water. That gives me about two and a quarter grams of actual acetic acid. So that means the number of moles is going to be, well, if I want them to cancel out properly, I'm gonna to have to do uh, 
0.25 grams divided by 60.05 grams per mole, so they can get moles on top. Bust out a calculator. Beep boop boop beep boop boop, and it's 0.037-ish moles. So that means that the concentration of my acetic acid in this case is going to be 0.037 moles divided by 0.072 liters. Push the buttons on your thing that makes the things go and you get 0.51-ish, I'll carry one more digit, four moles per liter, which just happens to know as molar concentration. Well, if you take a look at what I have over here, what I'm really missing is this, because I know this and I can solve for this. And since X is really the hydrogen concentration, that means I can calculate the pH. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. So just to recap, the disassociation constant is gonna be equal to the concentration of hydrogen atoms squared divided by the concentration of the thing it started from. But let's keep in mind, I know that Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative five because I looked it up in a textbook. The top one I'm just gonna call x squared because I don't know what it is. And the bottom part, hey, we calculated that already. That was this number. So that's 0 0.514 molar. Plug some stuff into a calculator. And you're gonna find that x is equal to about 3.0 times 10 to the negative uh, one, two, three, negative three molar. Well, knowing that, I know that pH is equal to the negative log of the amount of hydrogen acid things that there are, but this thing right here is just X. So that's pH equals the negative log of X. Plug that into your calculator and you get a pH of about 2.5. That's really acidic, like super acidic. Keep in mind that your stomach has a pH of two to three. Now in mayonnaise, obviously the pH is not that concentrated, but if you keep in mind that mayonnaise is mostly oil and a lot of bacteria are not fat soluble, they're water soluble, which makes them really deadly to us because we're mostly water, then bacteria have a really tough time growing inside mayonnaise, even though it's raw eggs. That said, sometimes salmonella gets kind of weird, kind of funky, and sometimes it can survive that. And because of that, that's why I recommend if you have a compromised immune system, like if you're pregnant or you're elderly, don't eat raw eggs, use pasteurized eggs. But yeah, that's how you calculate the pH of mayonnaise. And really all I had to use was a little bit of grade 11, grade 12 chemistry, and a little bit of, you know, gumption, I guess. Anyways, that's it. If you like this video, let me know. Maybe I'll make some more videos where I calculate, I don't know, the concentration of tastiness in beef stew. Anyways, um, links and stuff at the bottom if you want to see my references. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a good one.